So today's Saturday sketch is um, a little bit different uh, because uh, I already have in my uh, new uh, Game of Thrones sketchbook, which I uh, picked up at a festival for a dirt cheap price. Um, I've already done the biro sketches for this. Uh, I just use when I'm biro sketching, really liberating way of sketching because uh, you just have to deal with the lines you've got. I just use. One of these, it is just a, it's a big pen. There you go, you can see it there, hopefully. Uh, so just one of these, black, and um, that allows me to uh, do some uh, some sketching of various uh, various uh, things. But anyway, the uh, the the important point here is that I was commissioned to do some black and white illustrations for a for an upcoming Kickstarter. Choose Your Own Adventure Path book uh, by a guy called Gary Jordan, who I met at Fighting Fantasy Fest uh, last year. And uh, he uh, approached me and asked if I was uh, open for some illustration work, which I obviously am. And um, so, yeah, so it's a pirate adventure. I've not really done pirates before, um, but I really, really did enjoy the, um, the the sketches themselves. I will uh, put them up here on the screen so that you can see them. But the um, the the step that I uh, am doing slightly differently. Here we go. This is the uh, this is the one I'm actually working on today. Uh, this. Uh, this pirate battle between a couple of ships. Um, that was pencils rather than Byra. Oh well. <laughs> um, but the um, so that's what I'm going to work on today, and then I'm going to ink that up. Uh, so it's kind of the next step uh, in in the drawing process. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to clear that bit of work off the the drawing board that you can see there. Switch on over to printing this sketch out on my big trusty printer the size I want to work at so that I can work over the top of that uh, with a more refined drawing followed by inks and then we'll see where that goes. Looking forward to it, there's five of these in total, I'll uh, show you them all at the end um, but I'm only going to focus on the, the one right now. So let's hit the drawing board. So I've done a neater line drawing from the sketch and then the next step is to start inking up. Generally uh, when I'm working with inks I will start off with my 0.5 Copic Multiliner um, and that just starts giving me a flow and a feel for how the uh, ink lines are going to work. Once I've got into, warmed up into the piece, um, working on areas that are generally where I can uh, uh, sort of play around a little bit, then I will switch over to the brush and start laying in any large areas of the flat ink, the flat black ink. Um, in this particular piece, I wanted a reasonable amount of drama. So I wanted really stark sort of silhouettes uh, against the uh, the white of the paper and the um, and the interconnecting line work, and um, so yeah, that's the that's the brush and just block out wherever I need uh, full areas of black uh, ink. One of the greatest benefits of using a brush is the ability to uh, adjust line weight. Uh, so by altering the pressure of your hand, you can create a thicker or thinner line. And this really shows itself when uh, you're after the idea of movement, which is exactly what I'm after right here with the crashing of the waves between the two ships as they come together and start firing their cannons. So it's really good for very fluid and long lines that suggest that idea of movement. And then here, I want a little bit more control, but I still want to be able to adjust the line weight. So here I'm back to my Copic Multiliner, but in this instance, it's the brush pen tip that I'm actually using. Uh, so I just get a little bit more control with, the, uh, with this uh, brush tip. 
And then I'm on to another Copic multi-line. This one is my uh, 0.3 uh, mil uh, tip, uh, hard tip. And this one I find great for doing cross hatching and just adding that sense of uh, a shade rather than a solid black or a line work. Really good for this kind of thing. I do have a 0.03 as well, but I didn't use it on this particular piece. Um, that's for very fine detail work. I think that the other thing that's worth mentioning here as well is the paper stock that I'm actually using and that is a hot pressed watercolour paper with a smooth finish. Now this is a comic artist's trick. It, this is whiteout or tipex where depending on where you come from I have it in the pen and I tend to use this for drawing as well um, in many different ways and adding special effects. In this instance I'm adding the 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 splash of rain coming down uh, which was a uh, part of the original brief was to have uh, rain in this scene so I uh, pen out the white dots just kind of lifting the pen on and off the paper to so that it's a broken line and then I go back in with that 0.3 fine liner and just add these fine little outlines just to uh, give them uh, the, the marks and the streaks some body and it helps refine the direction of the uh, of the rain as it comes down. So the ink work is done, but we've had a turn of events. Um, after submitting the work and uh, chatting with with the author, um, we decided, given the body of work he already has, that the ink work doesn't quite fit the. Uh, aesthetic of the book um, so we made a decision and we're going to go ahead with working digitally with 3d assets now I'm not a 3d artist um, I use uh, a blender a tiny little bit or should I say I've played with blender I've never really used blender in any work as such but I do have a bit of a history with Daz and Poser I don't have access to Poser these days, but I do have access to Daz. So um, I'm going to shift over and take a different tack on this uh, on this piece now and the uh, subsequent pieces. Uh, so jump over onto the Mac, off the drawing board, and uh, let's switch to uh, the digital brush. Come on. As much as I love uh, traditional work, uh, when it comes to photo bashing, that really is my jam for digital. Um, I, I love it. So I've jumped over onto the uh, Daz 3D uh, shop um, to uh, to find some of the 3D assets. I know I'm going to need a pirate ship, so I bought this one. And this is me just in Daz, uh, playing around, just finding uh, the positions for the two ships um, I'm using the same model for both ships because you're going to be, see a very small portion of either. Uh, so it'll be fine and there's lots of atmospherics that are going to get laid over the top. So I export uh, the two images uh, that I've created uh, from the uh, ship and I bring those over into Photoshop. Using the color select, I delete out the white uh, of the uh, uh, out of the layers, uh, making sure that they both have on their own layer and then I adjust the layer stack so that the one ship is in visually behind the other ship and uh, tone it down just a touch, uh, just so that it's a little lighter, just to add some distance, uh, push it back further. And then just nudging the two images around until I find the kind of the composition that I that I want. Uh, a part of that it revolves around uh, adjusting the canvas uh, to suit the format of a book uh, as, a, as it is here and then just literally moving these two layers around just scaling, twisting, turning until they are right where I want them. The next asset I require is photography. Uh, I've been meaning to get this pack for a while, so this was the ideal opportunity. This is the Dramatic Skies pack from photobash.com. And uh, so with that, I can grab, there's hundreds of photos in that 
uh, set and I use sky so frequently in photo bashing it's worth grabbing hold of so I bring it over in one of those images over in Photoshop and again I just use the transform tools to find the ideal spot I know I want this hot spot of, uh, of the Sun right behind the ships to really kind of add the impact of drama and bring in those silhouettes again or the opportunity for those silhouettes again and uh, so comp that into position next step is then to i lay a uh, new layer at the top of the layer stack which i fill with black and i set this to saturation that gives a really good value structure to your black and white because these are going to be black and white illustrations there are there isn't any color intention for these I also want to start getting in some of the atmospherics so I just start bashing in some uh, photographs I've got of uh, smoke these are from a ways back can't even remember where I got these from uh, just to start adding the uh, the smoke effects um, I use a uh, mask to a layer mask to then get rid of parts of the photograph that I don't want big soft brush um, it's all soft edge stuff so a big soft brush just gets rid of all of the image areas I don't need and uh, that starts to add in the, uh, the the atmospherics that I want to start building up and layering up. There are a whole bunch of ways of creating atmospheric effects in Photoshop. When it comes to rain I really enjoy one of the old school ways which is to add a new layer, fill it with black, uh, add noise to that layer, uh, a lot of noise, really good strong filter on it and then add a motion blur to that uh, which uh, you can set for a direction add another layer over the top of that which you fill with black apply the clouds filter and then use that to create a mask on the the noise layer sounds complicated when you say it, but it's pretty straightforward anyway what this does is it gives you a basic texture that uh, you can then set any of the overlays that suits best I think I used a screen here and just reduce the opacity right down so that it uh, it's only just visible this layer represents your distant sort of mass of sheets of rain falling the next step is to just create a new layer, daub some paint We're using a solid brush, use the motion blur filter to create a direction and use a strong filter so you get long streaks. And then use the transform tool and the warp tool to just uh, stretch that out, position it how you need, um, duplicate the layer, move it around, flip it around until you've filled your area with the amount of raindrops that you actually want use dark colors as well as light colors and uh, you build up this layering of rain effects which i think is a very simple way of creating rain and it's uh, it can be modified because each chunk of rain is on its own layer you can modify it as you need down further down the line um, just the individual areas Okay, I am going to need me some pirates. So I'm back over onto uh, the Daz uh, shop front to find what I can grab. Just a couple of three different assets here to uh, to help build out the pirates themselves. And then jump back into Daz to uh, just play around with the pose a little bit. I only need to get it roughly where I need it because I'm still going to be heavily painting it in Photoshop. So I remembered with the figure to export it as a PNG instead of a JPEG. So this time around, I don't actually need to get rid of a white background because the PNG exports with a transparent background. So all I've got to do is drag the pirate now over into the Photoshop file. Use the transform tools to just tweak it, get it down to size, roughly into the area I need it. I also want to adjust how uh, light it is to make sure that it sits in with the degree of value structure that's in the uh, in that pirate ship there as well and then it's time to noodle away with the paintbrush and get these uh, assets to start looking like they're all part of the same scene
today it's all about being a pirate. <laughs> uh, so I've got my best pirate togs on. Whatever you call whatever a pirate calls this. A scarf, head scarf, whatever that is. You'll see I've been using some 3D stuff, um, but for this particular pose, I just do a lot of a go at doing the, the photograph. I want a pirate who's sort of firing a gun. Um, so I'm going to clamber up, if you have a look. <laughs> clamber up on the table now, get myself ready to take the photograph. And uh, we'll see how this, uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, so I basically need a pose, something, well actually, I think I'd rather have it from this side. So I need a pose, something like that. Ah. <laughs> Obviously not a shotgun. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I want. Hanging over the edge of the ship, maybe facing a bit forwards like that. And then I'll take that photograph drop it in to the uh, to the piece uh, and then paint up work over the top of it okay that's what i'm going to do now show you the photos now mm -hmm. 